Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, winter has arrived. The old cats are getting pretty well covered in snow. But uh, we got the old 5J right behind me here, sitting right where it was when we had uh, pulled the engine out of it. And I'm sure glad I got the engine out of it when I did because it's really not nice to be out here now. So heat's on in the shop. I'm gonna go in there and start uh, tearing that engine down today. So since I've decided that this poor engine block has seen better days and that I'm not gonna repair it, I'd be more apt to replace it. It's now a salvage operation to see if anything uh, is still good here. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is strip all these head studs out of here, make it a little bit less like a porcupine. The way I like to try and take these studs out is to uh, run one nut down on them a ways and then uh, stack another one right on top of it. Then what I'll do is uh, cinch them together that way. I can usually use a wrench and turn the entire stud out without having to uh, scar it up like with a vice grips or anything like that. Just a little bit uh, cleaner way of doing it. And if you get any studs that are a little bit too tight for the double nut method, I really like these uh, cam lock style uh, stud removers. They will mar up the surface that they're on a bit, but you can usually get a pretty good bite on them. And they usually do the job every time. Next, now I'm going to work on getting these four square plates off the side of the engine. They are what house the lifters that actuate the push rods. But first, I need to remove this linkage that uh, works the compression release levers. It's just uh, going to be a little pin at the end of each one of these levers. And then this uh, bar will come right off of there. And linkage bar out of the way and I've also removed most of the bolts for these lifter housings. One thing I want to show you here, I got my little stamp set. Um, I stamped a number one in this one, you can see a little one right there, a number two in this one, a three right there, and it's probably hard to see but a four right there. I always number things front to rear, um, even though I'm probably going to junk this block, there's still a possibility I may be using the lifters on this cam even if it's in a different block, so I just like to number everything so that I can always uh, put components that are worn to each other back in the same sequence. So finish uh, taking this last bolt out here. And sorry for the shadow, I had to employ the use of a uh, halogen light because the lighting in this building is kind of poor. Got that loose. This all should come out. And there's your lifters. They're retained in with that rod right there so that they can't fall out. First little glimpse inside the block. A little bit of black stuff, but it doesn't look horrible in there. Now that I've got all the lifters out, the next thing I want to do is take this external oil manifold off the side. And uh, it's held on by these cap nuts that just uh, go on these studs here. And each uh, cap nut's got a little copper washer under it. You want to make sure to get off of there. And you want to be uh, kind of careful with these because uh, it's pretty common to see these uh, crack or uh, uh, see them leak because these are just some bronze fittings here that are joined by soldered joints with uh, steel tubes and uh, I suspect that's kind of why this is so oily here that we might have some cracking going on on this solder joint here but you just want to try and uh, gently work it off these studs evenly all around and it seems to be kind of stuck up here so I'll have to get in there with a tool and just start gently uh, prying working this off those studs. There we go, we seem to have something happening now. Let's keep it all moving a little bit at a time. There we go, we're off the studs up here, just have the long ones from the filter base. And there we are, got it all in one piece. So I did some work off camera, removed all the studs from this oil manifold and oil filter area. Again, just uh, stripping the block of anything that may be of use at all because it's a good chance that I'm not gonna use this block again. Uh, the last thing I wanna take off on this side right now is this cover down here also holds the dipstick. So I've got just uh, this one bolt left. See if I can do it all one-handed and still hold the camera. And I also have a tray down there just in case oil might come out. No oil. But we've got sludge. 
Okay, now that I've got everything stripped on this side of the engine, I'm going to move over here. And what I want to do now is get this uh, starting pinion clutch housing drive assembly out of there. Problem is, uh, the way it was all filled with water in here, uh, when we found it, I'm pretty sure this is rusted solidly into the bell housing because I've got the bolts loose and I've tried to get it to slide forward and it won't even move. So uh, normally these would just kind of uh, disengage from the bore. There's an no O-ring out here. You could just drift it forward and get it out of the way. But of course this one's going to fight me so I'm going to have to make some room to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove this pinion engagement lever and arm back here. Get that whole assembly out of the way. So the first thing you do is remove the pinch bolt from the base of this lever down here. Then I'll have to uh, get onto the shaft that the lever pivots on through this hole here. Drift the shaft inward a bit so it disengages from this arm back here. And if you can drift that shaft inward far enough, it should disengage from this arm. Yep. And then the arm will just pull right out, just like that. So now that that arm is out of the way, I can get the pinion sleeve off. I want to save this piece here. It looks like it's in fairly good shape yet. I've got the bolts out, but big surprise, it's uh, rusted to the gear. I cannot make it loosen up. It should just be sliding straight off right now. So I've got the torches out. I'm going to apply some heat in this area here, see if I can't uh, expand that metal, break those rust bonds, hopefully get this off. There, and 30 minutes later, I kid you not, got it off. But it looks like it's in good shape yet. Didn't hurt it at all, and it's hot. Ladies and gentlemen, we interrupt your regularly scheduled programming to bring you this breaking announcement. There has been a late development in the Caterpillar D2 number 5J1113 engine disassembly saga. My next step was going to be removing this latch nut from the pinion shaft so that I could get the uh, uh, gear off of here and rig up a puller between these two bolts to try and get some push power on this whole housing to see if I could get it out of the bell housing here. But I put the big wrench on it, on those flats, and just turned a little bit on it, got some movement on the flywheel. So I turned a little bit more, and got some more movement. And the more I went, the more it moved. You see where I'm going with this? I got to looking at the cylinders, and as I rolled that pinion, I could see just a very little bit of movement on the middle two. And it's pretty dark down there, but trust me, there's movement on number four as well. Number one looks pretty darn solid yet, but the fact that I have three of these pistons that are now starting to move is very, very encouraging. I had thought all four would have been stuck fast, so I have kind of stopped what I was doing because I'm going to reevaluate my plan. I think I like having this pinion drive in here just for the mechanical advantage I can get on this flywheel by turning on that the two flats of that latch nut. And I think I'm going to uh, probably just err on the side of caution, exercise some patience, and throw some fresh penetrating oil on top of all four of these pistons and just let that stuff uh, soak soak in hopefully run down maybe it'll do a little bit of good um, with stuck parts if you can get them moving any sort of initial movement you've generally got the battle won but I've got in too much of a hurry before and paid the price for it so like I say patience is key I think I'm just gonna let these soak tonight hopefully that penetrating oil can seep down and uh, soften some of that uh, existing rust up a little bit. And I really don't want to uh, start rolling this engine over until I've had a good look at the bottom sides of the two bores, the two middle cylinders anyway, because I don't know if there's any sort of rust on the cylinder walls between these pistons. I'd rather not scrape them down through anything that may be there. I'd like to have a good look under there and possibly clean them up first. So. I think I'm going to end the video here. It's been a long day. I've been fighting this thing. We've got some rust problems back here. I was getting kind of cranky, but now I'm pretty much on top of the world. So I'd like to end it on a high note. Guys, as always, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and tune in next time.